Hello, I'm Dr. Ross Scalise. I'm an associate professor of medicine at the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine in Miami, Florida, in the United States. I'm also director of educational technology development at the Gordon Center for Simulation and Innovation in Medical Education. I was one of the authors of BME Guide Number no. 4, which was actually the first published systematic review under the BME auspices. Our topic review group leader was Dr. Barry Eisenberg, who is currently the director of the Gordon Center. My co-authors were Dr. Bill McGahey at Northwestern University in Chicago, Dr. Amo Petrusha, currently at Harvard, and Dr. David Lee Gordon, now at the University of Oklahoma. The question that our review group was asked to answer was, what are the features and uses of high fidelity medical simulations that lead to effective learning? The BME leadership posed this question because at the time that they were just starting uh, the BME initiative, this was late 1990s, early 2000s, was also the time when simulation education was taking off around the world, driven mostly by uh, the patient safety movement and the need to try to prevent uh, medical errors that were occurring in, in large numbers. Our review was published in 2005, and I'm proud to say it has become the most cited reference in the simulation literature. A recent look at Google Scholar showed that we have had almost 3,100 citations. The BME Guide has also become one of the most downloaded and cited references from Medical Teacher. So what were some of these features that our systematic review revealed? These will come as no surprise, I think, uh, to people as important educational features in general, like the provision of feedback, allowing opportunities for repetitive practice of skills, and the importance of integrating simulation or any other educational intervention into uh, the wider curriculum. We listed the top 10 most cited features that our, our review revealed at that time. What are the implications of our review? I think that it has become so well cited and has formed the basis for many subsequent reviews and even meta-analyses of the simulation literature because, number one, the features are consonant with well-recognized and accepted theories of adult learning. Things like experiential learning, mastery learning, deliberate practice, Many of the BME features fit squarely within these models and frameworks. Also, I think that our review didn't just cite uh, the BME features, but gave illustrative examples of how these principles can be used in one's teaching practice. And these principles don't just apply to simulation-based education, I think, but are much broader across other educational domains and practices. Some lessons to share with those of you uh, who are contemplating conducting a BME review. Um, much of our early experience was just kind of feeling our way uh, through the systematic review process and the later synthesis and publication. Many of those have subsequently been published by the BME Collaboration as their formal guidelines and also some tips to reviewers. These reviews take time, so allow yourself plenty of time. Try to form a review group with diverse membership that has various areas of expertise. Make sure you have a very well-formed research question. And remember, the review should be systematic, but doesn't necessarily have to be exhaustive or exhausting. This work can be fun and rewarding. In terms of try to keep your work practical and give tips and uses for clinical teachers in using what the evidence supports, we have subsequently updated our BME review um, with a later critical review and even an Amy guide. Amy guide number 82, uh, published by Dr. Yvette Motola, who's the assistant director here at the Gordon Center, and some of our international colleagues, takes more recent examples of the BME literature, uh, the BME features in the simulation literature, and 
uses them as illustrative examples of how you can put these features into your own teaching practice. I'd be happy to answer any other questions that you might have, and I'm sharing my email address with you. Thank you very much.